Caitlin Beavers, and this is my informative speech. This is my audience. Lovely family members. <laughs> okay, I decided to do my informative presentation on something that's always interests me, unsolved murders. Um, it's terrifying to hear of a murder, but even more so when the killer has never been found. Many of us have heard of some of these infamous murders or unsolved crimes. For instance, how many of us have heard of the Zodiac Killer? Anybody? Never? What about Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia? I've heard about it. You've heard of that one. And then one that's not really well known, Albert Fish, the Brooklyn Vampire. Did he bite people? No, he didn't bite people. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk about one today that's always interested me the most. So I'm going to take you back in time to London. When you see a picture of London, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? The Queen. It's beautiful, right? You got sun shining on big beautiful They're buildings, smiling friendly people, and then you have beautiful walks down alleyways. But in the late 1800s, that wasn't the case. There were people who were terrified and you wouldn't walk down an alleyway because you were afraid that you might find a dead body or be the dead body found by someone else. These were the days of Jack the Ripper. In 1888, he was one of the best known serial killers. He walked the streets of Whitechapel District in London. Many of us know him as Jack the Ripper, but he was also given the nickname the Whitechapel Murderer and Leather Apron. Most of his victims, well all of his victims, were female prostitutes who lived and worked in the slums of London. He was thought to have had 11 victims, but only five of the victims were traced directly back to him, and they became known as the Canonical Five. The Canonical Five were Mary Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Kelly. Although the other murders were included in the Whitechapel murders file, these five were thought to be Jack the Ripper's because they all shared the same method of operation from the murderer, which was a slit throat and disembowelment. Alright, and then here I have found the murder scenes. I have Mary Nichols' murder scene, which she was found in a narrow street called Bucks Road. Annie Chapman was found in Hanbury Street. Elizabeth Stride was found in Duckfield's yard by a man who was passing on his horse and buggy. Elizabeth was the first in a double murder the same day. With only her throat being cut though, it is believed that the guy on the horse and buggy scared off Jack the Ripper. Why do you hate me? Come on now, there we go. All right, Catherine Eddowes was the second woman murdered in the double murder. She was found in Mitchell Square shortly after Elizabeth's body had been discovered. And then Mary Kelly was the last of the victims. She was found in her bed murdered when the assistant of the keeper went to collect overdue rent money. Alright, Jack the Ripper was thought to be a medical man. He left incisions on all of his victims and some were even missing body parts and organs. I have one letter here that came out of my Jack the Ripper case book. It's one of the most famous letters he wrote called From Hell, and it was actually sent to the police officers with half of a kidney attached to it, which was believed to be one of the victim's kidneys in it. Right. Why was Jack the Ripper never caught? In the 1800s, there was no database for DNA. There was no forensic science services. But today we have DNA database well-educated detectives and forensic teams, which may have helped us solve this murder now. I have my work cited. And then this is the ending to it. Jack the Ripper, the case is still unsolved. Thank you.